In this morning's Health Watch, the mammogram debate. Breast cancer is the second deadliest form of the disease among women. Last year, it killed 40,000 Americans, but there is still no agreement on how and when and how often to screen for it. On Wednesday, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists advised annual mammograms should be offered to all women starting at age 40. Two years ago, a government panel recommended waiting until age 50. So we're looking for some clarity on this life and death issue, and we get it from CBS News medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton and Nancy Brinker, founder and CEO of the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Great to have both of you with us. Obviously, a really important topic to so many people. And we have heard, Jen, guidelines changing and evolving. How have they changed and evolved over time? Well, really, we were in front of this story, Rebecca, when it came out in 2009, and CBS really extensively covered it. The debate and the controversy, unfortunately, really continue to this day. So when you talk about recommendations, it really depends which organization is making those recommendations. If you break it down, ACOG, which, as you said, is the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the American Cancer Society, they say start screening at 40 and screen every year. The National Cancer Institute also says start screening at 40, however, you can break that screening down a little bit to every one to two years. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, they created quite a stir when two years ago they said, don't start until age 50 and then screen every two years. And again, these recommendations are for the woman at average risk. Mm -hmm. The medical question is, how do you know if you're at average risk until you've actually been diagnosed with breast cancer? And I think the question on everyone's mind, Nancy, is why can't they get together, pool their data, and come to one conclusion on this? Well, we've, we've had a conclusion for many, many, many years at Susan G. Komen, almost a generation. You know, screening saves lives, 98%. The five-year survival rate for breast cancer diagnosed early is 98% in America today, largely because of screening and early diagnosis. People look at it differently. The Healthcare Prevention Task Force was highly confusing uh, 20 months ago when mm -hmm. they took this on because they were scientists looking at data that most of us already knew. The point is, what do you do about this? And today, the announcement from ACOG, from the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, 50,000 of them goes a long way. These are treating physicians who are treating people and most people in America are treated in their own communities, not even in cancer centers and places like that. So we need workable, uh, we need workable recommendations. Also, mammography is not 100% perfect. It should be. We have the ability to make it perfect in the United States today. It's political will. Uh, you know, it should be more so accurate. So you say it's politics that is a lot keeping of it, this well, from becoming more accurate? Political will, not even politics. If you show political will, something happens. If you walk through one of the screening uh, machines at the airport, they can almost see what you're eating. So therefore, I can't be convinced that better screening and better technology, and that's a position we took 20 months ago. But the issue is it does work, and it works in a broad population, and people are living longer because of it. Even though they haven't done the studies to say who's living longer, the fact is we know it works. Jen, I want to get to you on how to reduce risk, because obviously that is something that so many people, in addition to mammograms, they think, well, how do I live my life differently? Right. And we know that breast cancer is a complex disease, Rebecca. And in fact, a lot of breast cancer is or can be behaviorally modified to reduce that risk. So there are important things that women can do. You can start doing them even when you're a teenager. But things like limiting alcohol use, very important really for, for most, if not all women, maintaining a healthy weight, avoiding obesity, exercising regularly, even exercise done in adolescence can reduce the risk of breast cancer later in life. And lastly, breastfeeding is an incredibly important method to reduce the risk of breast cancer, and more women need to know about that. This conversation will clearly be an ongoing one here at Absolutely. CBS News, but we appreciate both thank of you, you joining us with such important information thank today. You. Dr. Thanks. Jennifer Ashton, Nancy Brinker, thank, thank you. you.